All right, headship. 1 Corinthians 11.3. But I want you to understand that Christ is the head of every man, and the man is the head of a woman, and God is the head of Christ. This is a teaching that's disappearing in the church. Um, um, the modern uh, perspective of things is dissolving this, and, but it is a big biblical principle. And if I can show you guys the natural order through research and through just the basic perspectives I'm going to present, you're going to see why headship is so very real and ignoring it is such an actual problem in our marriages, in relationships, in the church structure. So the Bible emphasizes that men are spiritual leaders in the church, but especially at home. Um, husbands are supposed to lead through example and good character. This will naturally happen through healthy relationships because people naturally follow male leaders. I'm not talking about forcefully following, like a male forcing him way, his way into leaders. I'm talking about natural leadership. And let's be real, men are not very good followers. Uh, they're more likely to ba break rules, take risks, and resist authority. They are the most of all criminal activity. Men don't follow well. Okay, and, and they're not designed to, and we're going to explain why. But women are more likely to follow rules, accept authority, and conform to other people's <coughs> opinions. Women are naturally more followers. And, and, and actually, if you look at the stratification of women's intelligence and character, they're more the same, okay, where men are very much different in both their intelligence and characteristics. You got a lot more excellent intelligent genius level men. There's not many genius women compared to genius men. But you've also got a lot of unintelligent, stubborn men who don't learn and, and are socially um, psychopaths. Okay, psychopaths are almost always men, right? So, so men have this greater stratification because that stubbornness can either drive them to excellence or drive them to psychopathy. Okay, so men have to be aware of that too. They have to, men have to be very humble and they have to lead in that humility. Because women have a humility more naturally. But men need to step up in that leadership role with humility because, because they can become very excellent in these things. Feminism is a lot of damage. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. So a strong male head will lead, and he won't be moved from a righteous place. Because men are a little more stubborn. But if you take an immovable object and put it in the right spot, what's better than that, right? Men have the capability of being excellent and not moving from it, where women can be more easily swayed. Women should help a man lead because their children are twice as likely to stay in the faith if the father's bringing them church without, to church without the mother as compared to the mother without the father. So the children naturally follow the man twice as strongly. So that matters, right? So women are helpers and also nurturers, homemakers, and they support the social connections. Male headship is influencing and leading by example. So leadership and submitting to leadership should not be forced. This isn't something we say, you fall in your place, right? It's not, it's not what it is, and that's not what the Bible ever says about it, ever. The Bible just says, this is a man's job, this is a woman's job. That's it. Do your job. It should happen naturally, and it will happen naturally in the context of love and obedience to God. Men are not just spiritual leaders, but they're also, they also lead in, in, in various ways, in courting, romance, and physical and emotional intimacy. Men are also providers and protectors. Wives will follow a husband who leads properly. But she'll struggle to follow a man who can't control his emotions, flesh, or communication. And grandparents are still parents, too. We have this weird culture where, like, oh, they're 18, they're out of the house, they're on their own, bye, right? And then I'm just going to go live my golden years and not, you know, not be involved. And so grandparents have a role, too. Grandfathers lead in wisdom and knowledge. They give, they're supposed to give a lot of that, uh, you know, teaching about buying a house, buying a car, the, the wisdom in life. Okay, Te teaching, uh, you know, godly values, te teaching biblical values to the children and grandchildren and enforcing those. Because, again, te the children are twice as likely to follow the man's teaching, right? They're twice as likely to take on the man's values. The man has to be a strong teacher. And grandmothers will help with the children and help support the social connections between the families. Marriages are more likely to survive when grandparents are supportive. 
That's a statistical fact. We need strong grandparents who are involved. Um, and when grandparents get older, the children take care of them, especially when those social bonds have been kept through time. Parents need to teach this natural order of life. Our society has no boundaries and endless freedom, and that's terrifying for kids. Kids do very badly without boundaries. And, and, with, and now we've got adults who are doing very badly because they haven't had boundaries. Right? Boundaries are important. These values are boundaries, very important ones. One of the major problems we have is mental health, a crisis of anxiety and depression and suicidal thoughts, especially in young women. Girls especially have a lot of pressure because they're taught to be like men. This feminist movement has, has made women into men, where women are taking on two gender roles. They're told to provide and lead and protect, go into the workforce and do all these things that men are doing, when really, most of the time, they just want to stay and take care of their family. And then when they have kids, they're really split, and their heart's really broken, because now they're doing a male and female role, and they, they feel inadequate everywhere. And they're not even taught that they're supposed to want that. They've never been taught it. Many uh, don't think they can succeed in both gender roles. And some young women just give up. And, and as their biological clock ticks away, they just give up. So they give up their desires, and they give up on men. And you can't really blame them for giving up on the men, because the men aren't taught to step up and be leaders. They're not taught headship. So the men sit back while the women play both roles. And these, the men in our society, a lot of times, you, get, you hear these issues of, well, he's not helping out around the house enough. He's, just kind of, he's not engaged with the kids enough. You know, it's like, well, he's not taught that. He's not taught to take on the female role. And if you guys are splitting the work role, you have to split the, if you're splitting this male role of leading and providing and protecting, you also have to split the female role of homemaking and nurturing, right? And the men aren't trained to, to take on that feminine role. And it's okay if you're going to do that in a marriage, but it's kind of unnatural. Women are designed to stay home. Their hearts hurt if they're not there with their kids. Men, we're, we're not very sensitive compared to women. We're insensitive in a way. But we're because we're meant to leave the house and go and work and provide, and we're meant to be okay doing that. We're not. Our hearts shouldn't be completely. I mean, it hurts when I'm away from my kids, but I'm not heartbroken the way my wife would be, because she feels that physical, God-given desire in her to be home with the kids. I don't have that because I need to be away working longer hours than her. Okay, and so we're, when we confuse these roles, we're fighting against our biology. We're fighting against our God-given order, and the loss of the idea of headship is, is severing us from the natural order, and it has consequences. So men need to be taught to manage money, to lead, to communicate, to understand their emotions, too, because they're supposed to be protectors of the wife, not just physically, but emotionally. Um, and parents have failed to provide this foundation. And, and what's happened is, especially in these young women, one in three young girls today have considered suicide. One in three. Think about your grandchildren. One in three, right? And, and hopefully you've influenced them to a point that they're the two in three that aren't, you know? And I trust that a lot of the children coming up in the church are not part of those one in three. That's probably more of a secular number. But um, it, it's there. And that's twice the rate of boys. And, it's, and, and here's the thing that really gets me. Like, women are naturally more, uh, the word is, if you're looking at the big five personality, neurotic, which means they have more like anxiety because they're meant to protect the children. They're meant to think about the children's needs. So they, they're a little more um, high strung anxiety. And so they do have a naturally higher rate of depression. But here's the one that, that, that is really important. These rates of depression are twice the last generation. So even though women are meant to be a little more nervous, because again, there's, there's good purpose for that. They're meant to raise the kids. They're meant to be nervous about the kid's safety so he doesn't hit his head. Like, I'm just like, oh yeah, he's walking on the table, whatever. And my wife's like, no, he's going to hit his head. Get him off the table. You know, like, I don't have that anxiety. But, but I need to be a fighter. Like, I need to be able to go to war, go into a firefight, go into the police force, go into the military, because I'm a man, right? And I need to be able to fight off an enemy if, there, if one comes. I need to be able to fight off a big dog coming at my kid or something like that. I don't have that anxiety because I need to be risky in that way. But 
She's not meant to do that. She's meant to be the protector of the kids. So you see how these things are designed that we have our strengths and weaknesses and we have to respect them and, and abide by them. And without understanding them, there's serious issues in, in these marriages. But, and so even though women are going to be naturally a little more with higher rates of depression and anxiety, it's twice the rate of the last generation, which means that we're failing this generation. We're failing right now in this generation more than we have in the past. And that's really the breakdown of faith, the breakdown of the church, the breakdown of conservative values, the, the breakdown of understanding gender roles, the breakdown of our sexual values, the breakdown of all this stuff. The, you know, the increase of the pornography and sexuality and the increase of exposure, the increase of media, um, it, it, it's brainwashing people into unnatural designs and it's got consequences. There's such a conflict between what the world says and what God says. The, the word for this is complementarian. Okay, that's like a theological word for headship, complementary. The idea is men and women are different and we have complementary roles, like a yin and a yang, like two puzzle pieces that fit together to make a whole puzzle. We are inherently different. We're not the same. And to think that we're the same causes serious problems. And to treat us like we're the same causes serious problems. We need to know our differences. We need to respect our differences. Learning this has made me respect my wife more because I go, I know she's going to be more anxious and I know it's for a good purpose. And when she's coming to me about issues with the kids or things that she thinks might be an issue with the kid, I'm no longer saying... Wow, you, that's just that's crazy. I'm not going to worry about that. I'm thinking, all right, she's got this smoke detector that's a lot more sensitive than what I naturally have. So I'm going to defer to her and let her be the nurturer and, and let her play that role. Because now I understand, now that I know this, now that I've learned this, I understand that that's her strength and my weakness. And that's the way God made us. And then we respect that, we grow together and, and, and we work better as a team.